welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makers. Today I am making over this little cute van. It's the Radio Rentals version of the number 62 television service van made by Lesney. These came out in 1963. There was a couple of different versions. Um, this one is the Radio Rentals, as I said. The other one was a rent -a set version. The only difference being, to the casual observer, is the stickers on the side of the vehicle. In reality, though, these two models are quite different in that one of them, the rent -a set model, the base is held on with two tabs, one at the front and one at the back. Whereas this Radio Rentals model that I'm doing today, the front of the base is held on with a small rivet, as you will see. Here's the render set one that I did earlier in the year. I'll just demonstrate here that this vehicle came with these red plastic accessories. These here are not the originals, they are reproduction. So it had a ladder, an aerial on the roof, and three little television sets in the back. So anyway, let's crack on and get the base of this model off. I'm going to do that by removing the flange on the end of that rivet post on the front there using a drill that's almost exactly the same size as the rivet post diameter itself. I'm just removing the barest minimum of metal because that's the thing to do here. Makes for a better end result. And if you need to lever the base off just a little bit, so be it. It will click back in nicely at the end and be self-retaining somewhat and the screw that I'm going to put in there will probably not actually hold the base on as such but will disguise the hole if anything so this one looked like the rear door was missing but surprise surprise and this happened on the first one I did the actual original door was pushed right up in the roof there by some kids fingers and was missing for years now I've got to take this transparency out that's the windscreen, and I use this special shallow cut drill. There's a comparison, the one on the left is the one I'm using. And it's because that rivet there, it's very easy if you overdo it to drill through the roof. So once again, just remove the barest amount of material. You don't want to overdo it at this stage. And I haven't done one of these transparencies for quite a while. I think the last three models were very old models and they didn't have any plastic in them at all. So I'll just pull that out there with those tweezers and I can inspect it now and see that it's not terribly cracked or ruined. Some would be, but this one's not too bad overall. So I'm going to give it a bit of a polish up because it looks a little bit hazy. And I'll do that in a minute. Now at this stage here, before I paint strip the model, I always try and match the colour to the original, if, if there's any original paint on it. You can usually find some somewhere on the model. Here I'm using these Mr. Hobby paints, the white and these two tan colours. I'm hoping that just with these two, three colours I can match the paint. I may use a little bit of yellow, undecided as yet, I shall have to see how I go. So I've got the rubber gloves on because I'm sick of my hands being covered in paint and I open this and I'm a little bit disappointed there's no paint in there so I don't really have much option but to go with this other color that I don't think is the right color so I'm going to have to dumb it down a lot with the white just put a little bit on here as a kind of reference point so I know where it started and I can see as it changes colour, how close I'm getting to the original. So I start off with the white, and I'm going to add the brown to the white. I found if you add the darker colours to the white, rather than vice versa, you don't use as much paint. Although here I am using quite a liberal amount. It's always good to have extra paint made up anyway, because Sometimes in the latter stages of the uh, makeover you might drop it or damage it somewhere and you have to make a, a quick repair and then repaint it again. 
nothing worse than mixing up the paint and then running out and having to try and duplicate it again. It's funny how the eye perceives colour. I have noticed, as you go about the business of mixing the paint, it suddenly dawns on you that perhaps this colour needs a drop of green. Mm, still too light. This is one of the longer parts I find of the actual restoration. It can get a bit fiddly and frustrating at times. So now I've got the paint mixed, I just water it down a little bit with some thinners. So keep it fluid stop it from drying out because this may sit around for a couple of days now so I, I put some tape on the top and set it aside for when I need it. Now the base is a bit chipped it needs to be repainted black I don't want to get any on the axles or tires it's almost impossible to mask off the axles so I'm in the habit of removing the end of the axle using this grindstone in a Dremel and just pulling the wheels off like that. I'm showing you a close up here so you can gain an appreciation of how I hold the model. My left finger is pushing the axle through so to its maximum extension although sometimes it slips through like that and the right thumb is holding the wheel where the Dremel is out of the way. Now here you've got to be mindful that can you see how close the grindstone is to the back of the base there. Sometimes you have tunnel vision and you grind off a bit that you didn't mean to grind off so something to be mindful of and voila here is the base ready for paint stripping and repainting now on these models I hold them with these hemostats and there's always a projection well nine times out of ten there's a little bit on the model there enabling you to grip it by an unpainted part Maybe on occasions in the past, it, I have not been able to find something to hold the model on. And in that instance, what I do is I super glue a nail, like a flat headed felt nail, on the inside of the model. And then I use that to hold the model whilst I'm paint stripping it. And then when it's finished, I just snap it off. Now, this paint is reacting really, really well with this paint stripper, which is good. Sometimes it, you get a stubborn type of paint. I don't know what additives they put in them or what the difference is. Never been able to figure it out. I'm not a, a chemist. But this paint came off really easy, as you can see here. Sheets of it just falling off the model, which is what I like to see. few little bits clinging on in the corners of the casting so it's great to use a toothbrush just to get in there and scrub these things clean after the majority of the paint has been removed I use these rather deep uh, fast food containers as a little bath of hot water and clean the remaining scraps off you can buy these containers in two depths, I've noticed. So I use the deep ones for the bath and the shallow ones for the paint stripping. That way you don't splash water everywhere, you see. Now when this goes back together, you can see that tab on the back goes in a slot. And the front is going to be held in with a screw. So I've got to drill out that post there and thread it so I can put this little screw in as per normal. As I said in the beginning though, if you remember, the uh, the other one, other model I did, only had the two tabs, no, no rivet whatsoever. So I'm going to drill it out with this really fine drill, and it won't lock into my drill chuck, so I've used some heat shrink, and I've put multiple layers on of different thicknesses and built it up. I've also ground off the excess metal there on the end of that post, so that the head of the screw will sit flush with the base when it's screwed in. 
Otherwise, I run a risk of it sitting up a little bit and it will look a bit off. Now here's some nice close-ups of the channel I've drilled that I'm going to thread with a thread tapper. There you can see how neat the end of it looks after I've worn away the excess material. Now just using this hand tap, I cut a thread, it can be a bit fiddly. And with these narrow posts, you can fail if you try and rush it or push too much. You can burst that like a banana skin. It can just break into several pieces and then you're left with no options other than to glue the base on using some epoxy resin or similar. Now for this model, since it's quite a light color, I'm using this white undercoat today. And you've got to have the extraction fan on for this one because this stuff smells like death. It is a horrible, I don't know what it is, but as soon as you cop a whiff of it, you know it's bad for you. So make sure you, you mask up and have that fan on. For the base, this is some cheap satin black that I have boxes of. It's great for the base. I get it from the $2 shop down the road, so it's a cheap an easy option you don't even have to mix it up or make your spray gun dirty and have to clean it again here's a close-up of the finish when it's dried it's just a really good natural looking paint now this has been undercoated we can look at some of the details there's a fuel filler cap some door hinges and door handles and attachments on the roof there for the ladder so quite a nice little casting I'm just spraying some thinners through the airbrush just to check its function. Seems okay, time will tell. This paint has been sitting here for about 10 hours. So I just give it a bit of a whisk with the paint stirrer there to um, make it fluid again and uniform. And as you can see, it flows quite well. Through the airbrush, there's a small piece of contamination there, a tiny little bit of fluff which was really annoying. And I tried covering up with a thick coat, hoping it would level out, but it didn't have to respray it. Anyway, to rush things up these days, I put my models in the toasting oven and I set it for what I thought was like 35 degrees. But I was shocked when I went to take the model out and nearly burnt the skin off my hands. This thing's running at like 70 to 80. So don't trust the accuracy of the dial on the front if you have one, because I'm pretty sure this one runs too hot. Now I'm giving these tires a bit of a clean. They're just black plastic. And this model doesn't look like it's been played with much because these wheels are just in mint condition. I'll show you one here now that I've cleaned it up. They look absolutely beautiful. You wouldn't find a better wheel on another model, I reckon. One last thing now, just to clean up these axles, make them look a little bit shiny. They're not too bad, they're not rusty, they're just tarnished a bit. I run them in the drill with a little bit of emery paper there. And don't forget the end. It doesn't matter about where it's held in the drill chuck because the, the wheel will disguise that bit once it's refitted. Now here's that transparency, as I said, it's a little bit hazy. So I'm going to use a tried and tested method and use some auto sole metal polish, aluminium polish, to clean them up. A couple of cotton buds. The last time I did this, I used it on the Priscilla bus and that was a later model and the, it made it actually worse. And that's the first time that's ever happened. So I guess the later models had a different type of plastic. However, if it's one of the earlier ones built in the 60s, you shouldn't have a problem because I haven't had a problem yet. I'll give it a final polish with a makeup pad. I'm happy with that. I shall now go on and do the sides and the sunroof. So when I've completely finished and I've washed off any contaminants and it's dry, I now dip this, I immerse it in this self-shining floor polish 
which is a tip I got off of a modeling channel. A guy used it for his aircraft canopies. And it's a great little hack there because that floor polish makes this glass pop. It just gives it that extra level of newness. Of course, you won't get it looking 100% new. I mean, the model is 50 years old. So now I'm out in my shed and I'm going to put these wheels and axles back on the base. Simple case of using two modified nails in my drill press. And I hold the axle with these small pliers. I've put some paper tape over the jaws so I don't mark the base. Now I saw on someone else's channel the other week, a guy actually did this in his hobby shop at the bench using a hand powered battery drill. So if you haven't got a drill press, do not panic. It can work just as well with a small handheld battery drill. When I do this, I always try and get the two that I am reforming on the same side and the originals on the other side then if I ever wish to display them I can basically have the best side the original side showing and there's no discrepancy it looks very symmetrical and give it a quick check there for the free running capabilities of the wheels and these look mighty fine so Moving on, I've, I've found that door hidden, but I'd already ordered a replacement part just in case it wasn't in there. And I'm gonna use the replacement replica part because it's brighter and cleaner looking. I also ordered these Radio Rentals decals. These have been sitting around for about six months. This is the plastic reproduction parts that came with the model. Unfortunately, I've lost the aerial, so I'm gonna to have to go through my parts boxes and find that. I'm sure it's there somewhere, it's just been broken off the sprue. There's a comparison of the rear doors. You know, the one on the right is the one I'm going to use. And yes, I found the aerial. So now I've got all of the parts ready to put this little baby back together. I've had this model for so long and I've just been putting off and putting off doing it. And now I'm really glad that I took the plunge, because this is another one to tick off my bucket list. I'm going to glue this transparency back in now that it's dry, using a small amount of silicon. This way, if I ever source a replacement or a brand new windscreen from somewhere, I can easily whip this one out without damaging the casting and I can remove the silicon with a little blade and put the new one in. So this is a basically fixed, but it, you could call it a temporary fix that it could be improved on. It looks really nice. I do like the touch of the, the added touch of the style of the, the sunroof there. It makes for a little bit more interest on this otherwise plain model. Take that screw out. I'm going to put the base on. That little projection there looks like it might press on the windscreen and prevent windscreen from falling, which is good. Now I've done this one once before, as I said, and I know this door can be tricky to get in. You have to basically try and position it roughly in, in position there and then clamp it down using this rear molded section on the base that acts as a guide when you're opening and closing it. Uh, it looks a bit crooked, but I haven't clamped anything down yet, so it's still loose for me to manipulate until I'm happy with how it's moving. And now I can put that screw into position and clamp the base on and lock everything together. Now, with this model, I was so focused on various parts that I actually dropped the ball. And uh, it was only around about now sometime I noticed that this model has some damage on the front right-hand bumper. 
and I was horrified because I'd reached the stage now where I was looking forward to getting this video out and for me to strip all that paint off repair that minor damage on the bumper bar and then repaint it and put it all back together again I don't think it would have been out on time and it just set me back so I, I continued on and I'm hoping that apart from that it's going to look really good now the, as I said before these decals I've had for maybe six months and they haven't gone on particularly well now this one here I felt that end had tucked under uh, over the top sorry because if it was underneath I felt that when I pulled the backing sheet out it would have released itself but it didn't so I was a little bit horrified here because I haven't got any replacements and I'm thinking this is turning bad but with a little bit of patience and careful manipulation I managed to unfold that crease however I don't know whether it's the age of the decals or the type of paper used but it started to curl up from the bottom I used some decal setting solution to try and get it to set and as it did it kind of curled up a little bit on the end and, and became misshapen and try as I might I saturated it with water and a small brush I could not release it and I could not straighten it out so it is as it is but you can't have everything I suppose some people could argue that it looks more original in that the decals aren't exact but it doesn't make me feel happy moving on I put the accessories on and the televisions in the back and basically there's nothing more I can do other than show it off on the carousel where you can see all of its faults and minor imperfections and myself I always hate this bit because on the big screen I think how could I have missed that why didn't I do that better oh look there's a hair there's a thumbprint there's a, a chip there's a sp <laughs> you name it I've seen it and all you can do is say well that's another one done move on just try and get better at it next time and learn from your mistakes so here's the two of them together just to let you see the different variants remember the renter set one the base is different it's held on with two tabs without a rivet post at the front that's the only difference I could find on these two castings other than that the stickers but I think they make for a wonderful pair of toy vans and they're gonna look great in the display cabinet now I've fixed this van up it has prompted me to get up on the roof and fix my television aerial because I'm not getting very good reception we had a storm the other day and I think it's moved Kevin's going to help me so we're going to communicate with these walkie talkies let's hope that between us we can get my tally fixed Kevin, can you hear me? Over. Kevin, how's that? Uh, have you got a signal? What about... All right, good. I'm coming down. Kevin, are you there? The ladder's fallen down. Welcome to another episode of Marty.
Thank you all for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. And until next time, I'll see you later. That is not what I wanted to see. You f***ing...